Today, I would like to discuss with you investment in debt securities, which is uh, other companies' bonds. And first of all, they are split into three large categories, trading available for sale or held to maturity. Obviously, since bonds are long-term, held to maturity will be also long-term investments, longer than a year. We will not be discussing them within this course, but I wanted to let you know about the category itself. Trading and available for sale, um, on the other hand, have very similar method to record them. We will be using cost method. The first two steps are identical. That's what I will show you in a second. And then adjustment to market is different, and it is a topic of a different uh, video. Trading securities are bought with an intentional intention to just speculate on a short-term gain. The price of a stock, the price of a bond will go up. We sell them and we're done with them. So those will fall under short short-term investments or short-term assets. Available for sale are somewhere in between between uh, trading and held to maturity. Therefore, most likely they will be longer than a year. All right, so we will be using what's called cost method to account for our debt investments. If you remember cost principle, that's how we got the name for this method. We will be using cost principle when everything that we had to incur to get the investment itself will be reported as its cost. Assume one, two, three company, fiscal year and uh, December 31st, purchased a debt investment on April 1st, 2013 for $50,000 plus $1,000 that we had to pay in brokerage commission. We will open another new account that's called debt investment. Debt investment. That's your regular um, asset account. So a normal balance will be debit. That's why when I'm debiting it, it will go out, go up. Debt investment for again cost fifty thousand plus my thousand dollar commission. So cash paid out the door is fifty one thousand. Okay, on October first. I gave you the interest, so there's nothing to calculate. You will receive interest revenue. So we will debit cash, since we got cash. And again, no calculation, simply $2,000. However, in some of the problems, you will see that they gave you the interest. So simply take then the face value of your investment and multiply by interest, and then watch for that time how long we had the investment. Interest revenue. Interest revenue for $2,000. Okay. December 31st, we have, we have not received any interest. However, since the interest has been outstanding since October 1st, so we have full month of October, November, and December, we get to accrue or grow three months worth of interest revenue. So I will debit interest receivable, interest receivable. It's like cash to be. It's another current asset account for a thousand dollars, half of our interest, and credit will be to interest revenue for a thousand dollars. Next one, on April 1st, we will receive cash, the same $2,000. You know, that check will not look any different from October 1st check. However, the sources where we got cash from are somewhat different. First of all, we will collect this interest receivable for $1,000. So let's credit that. Interest receivable. For a thousand dollars, and then the second portion came from interest revenue in year two thousand fourteen. So this revenue recorded here was for year thirteen, 
and this one recorded in year 40. That's why we had to split it the way we did. Now, be careful with the next journal entry. When we uh, sold the investment on April 1st, 2014 for 35000 a less commission of 1000 this commission is not treated the same way as commission that we paid on the original purchase. I guess one way to think about it is freight in versus freight out on inventory. Your freight in was included in the cost of inventory, and then freight out was your regular uh, selling expense. In similar way, is in here. So cash received on sale will be thirty five thousand less commission that you had to pay. So your cash proceeds amounted to thirty four thousand dollars. Now you know that you sold that investment, so that account must be credited to bring it down. Now be very careful, we sold half of the investment and uh, the original inclination of every student out there is grab that 50,000 right here divided in half, 25,000. The problem is, if you look at the account, we recorded investments at cost. So it was not 50,000, but rather 51,000. So you have to always, now go, don't get, don't be lazy here. Always, always go to the original investment and check out what the cost is. You will have to take 50,000 plus one, 51,000 and divide it by two to get the cost of the investment that you're selling. That will be 20, I should put it in red, $25,500. Comparing cash proceeds of 34 to your um, cost, what you paid for that investment, $25,500, will give you a gain on investment or gain on sale of investment of $8,500. That's it. Good job.